In today's video, we will discuss about how to write good answers in Indian Economic Service exam. Now, whenever we are preparing for Indian Economic Service exam, the most important thing is answer writing. Generally, when I talk to my students, they focus more on reading and less on writing. Let me tell you honestly why I'm making this video is just to give you certain methodology where you understand this examination conceptually better. For example, if you are going to give this examination, what is the most important thing? The most important thing is to write better answers because you yourself will not represent in the examination hall. Your copy will represent you. So that is why I always put stress to my students that read less but write more. Just because, because whatever you are reading, it's very difficult to recall in the examination hall. But whatever we write, suppose for example, a topic called inflation, which is the last topic in the syllabus of Indian Economic Service exam. When we talk about inflation, inflation has four or five angles only. For example, we say uh, types of inflation, then the problems to counter the inflation, measures of inflation like CPI, WPI, etc. Now, on a one single page, if you just write the inflation, two, three definition, then their types, then consequences, how to control it, and then how to measure inflation like CPI and WPI and other measures, trends, etc., which is exactly written in the syllabus. Now, here you need to understand that when we make notes, the notes should be crisp and short. Reason being, notes cannot be in paragraph. Notes will always be in bullet points because the exact notes will not be the copy paste from the book. And from your notes, you cannot do copy paste in the examination copy. So for that, bullet points notes are the best and the beneficial in terms of revision. Why we make notes? The reason is very simple because we need to revise all the content quickly. Because if you go through the book again and again before the exam, it's very difficult to go and revise all the chapters, find those things in the book. That is why we make handwritten notes. Now from those notes, if you imagine you make one question named as inflation, in that inflation question, if you write the same content, it's the revision for you, along with answer writing practice. Now doing answer writing practice is very vital because whatever you have studied, because when we read, it's like passive learning. Nobody is asking, but when we write the same thing, what we have learned, it's like active learning because we have to write the same thing, what we have read or what we have learned through books. So answer writing will help you in this when we counter any difficulty while preparing for this exam. Now, the most important thing while writing answer is reading the same type of content that is UPSC is expecting in the answer copy. That is why I always say to my students that read newspaper editorial section. Now in the newspaper editorial section, it is very important to see the structure of the answer. Generally that structure people ignore. Imagine that in an editorial, if you are reading a news in the newspaper, you find in one thing, the person is talking something else. Suddenly they switch the topic and they change the context. You will not enjoy reading. Imagine the mindset of that person who is evaluating your copy in UPSC. If that person does not enjoy the flow of answer, that person will not reward you marks. And then people say UPSC doesn't give marks. UPSC give marks. You don't know how to fetch those. So in order to fetch those marks, you have to understand what is the demand of UPSC. It's like demand creates its own supply. Like opposite of says law, that's what we have seen in the 20th and 21st century. Here, the most important thing you need to understand is why to read newspaper editorial? Because if you read newspaper editorial, you understand structure, you understand flow, you understand what to write in intro, what to write in body, what to write in conclusion, how to add data, how to add examples, how to add facts and figures to support your argument. And that is where you make your answer content rich. So whenever a person is reading your answer, they will reward you with highest number of marks. So here, what exactly you need to do? One thing is in introduction. Introduction must be indicative in nature. It means it should give a highlight to the examiner that you understood the question. Because if you are repeating the same lines written in the question, again, you are doing the same in the introduction. 
then it's like the repetition you are wasting your words and no time so it's like whenever you are reading the question you understand that just you understand what the core part of the question that question is asking you to answer write that as soon as possible introduction must be 10 to 15 percent of your word limit then comes to body body is everything it's like content and the context like for example content and the context people don't understand content is the amount of information you will put in but context is the vehicle that you put in it means maybe that timeline people criticize Jawaharlal Nehru you can criticize but if you go in 1950s it's difficult from that position people can criticize COVID-19 policies of the government easily but what happened at 2020 those people knows those who have seen that time so content and context simple this is a water bottle so this water inside this bottle is content but this bottle is context so it means the same water if i throw on this table this context will change and if the context will change the content shape will also be changed so in answer writing two things are very important in body that is content and the context next important thing in body is always give you examples always give argument with evidences if i am saying inflation is increasing in india if i am saying foreign exchange reserves are increasing in india do you have the data if you write data it will help you in giving authenticity if you are quoting any report just in bracket you write rbi imf that will help you in substantiate your point and when it comes to conclusion in conclusion it is very simple it's not a summary of the answer people generally uh, don't understand what exactly need to be written in the con conclusion means is the ending so if the question is asking you to take the stand in the conclusion take stand but in the question if they are no not telling you or not asking you to take the stand don't take the stand just give options leave open-ended but conclusion is always be optimistic because you are preparing for the examination where the word Indian is Indian economic service or this is similarly working in Indian administrative service as well you are giving exam of UPSC that requires that level of intelligence and the knowledge. So you should show some kind of optimism while ending your answer because after reading your conclusion, examiner will reward marks. So in short, it is very, very important to know the knowledge. But if you are not able to deliver on paper, it's difficult to understand. I hope you understand this. I hope you like the video. If you have any questions, do comment in the comment section. Thank you so much.